Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. One of the first segments of treatment noted in the treatment plan for this patient is to do the mouth preparations on the teeth that are not to be restored. The first of these preparations would be the occlusal rest uh, preparations for the primary and, uh, and direct retainers and for the indirect retainers. Then to modify any axial surfaces uh, for the direct retainer uh, reciprocal arms and then thirdly to modify centric stop areas for the occlusion in the occlusion for the restored teeth uh, opposing the uh, opposing the teeth to be replaced in the uh, edentulous area so the first of these is the preparation of the occlusal rest now diagrammatically the occlusal rest should be uh, placed in the tooth in such a manner that the marginal ridge, the height of the marginal ridge, is higher than the deepest portion of the rest. Now this will form an angle with the vertical and cervically that angle should be less than 90 degrees and occlusally the angle should be greater than 90 degrees. This is to resist any dislodgement in the posterior direction or in the direction toward the edentulous area of the clasp that is going to be placed on that tooth. Now from the occlusally, occlusally it would look like this and the rest is in the center of the tooth uh, hopefully that would also be the center of the ridge bearing area and uh, it would, should be well within the tooth and it should not be on a sloping surface as we have indicated before. Uh, this marginal ridge should be higher on the distal than it is at the bottom of the rest. Now, on the patient, the occlusal rest is placed with a number six carbide burr, round. It could also be placed if it were on a molar with a number eight carbide burr. Uh, the patient is not anesthetized for this procedure and it is done at low speed. The patient will feel a lot of vibration and it is done at low speed so that you will not go through the enamel and into the dentin in a, in a hurry. Now when you think you are coming close and you want to check the depth of the rest, this can be done with red wax. We're going to check, check the depth of the rest to this point. Now, I'd like to have you just lubricate that area with your tongue. Just The patient will lubricate the area, uh, put some saliva so that the red wax will not stick to the uh, tooth. And then the red utility wax is merely used as an indirect indicator uh, as to whether the rest is uh, deep enough or not. As we're inspecting the wax, what we're looking for is the little dimple that we have uh, created in the tooth. The, uh, now, if you cannot use a, or a carbide burr is not available, this round dimple can be created with a diamond, uh, a round diamond instrument or a round gemstone. Uh, it's not necessary to use a carbide burr specifically. Um, one thing we would have to do in addition to creating this dimple is to round the marginal ridge area over so that it, that it is not uh, sharp. So this rest, although it is uh, 
it, it has a good start. It is not completed, and we will have to complete uh, this one and go on and create rest for the uh, for the indirect retainers. So we'll continue. The th three rests are now completed. Uh, we have on the distal of the bicuspid the primary occlusal rest, which is probably the largest of the three uh, because it is going to uh, dissipate the force from the partial to the tooth and we want to prevent fracture of that rest. So it is a, a little bit larger possibly than our indirect retainer rests. The two indirect retainer rests are on the mesial of the bicuspid on that same side and of, on the mesial of the bicuspid of the opposite side. Now this, we should provide access and try to project the indirect retainers coming from the lingual bar and into that rest area. If it needs any, a slight amount of axial reduction, that should also be done. The uh, last rest, which is not going to be prepared now, but will be placed at the time of the, of the preparation of the uh, restored teeth, which is the molar. On the distal aspect of the molar will go our last rest for the direct retainer. Now one last check, and a very important one, is that uh, we should check to see if we have a clearance with the occlusion, with the teeth in occlusion for the rest seats. You want to close? Mirror, please. We should be able to see, and I can see, possibly we won't be able to see on camera, that there is room for an, in, or for an occlusal rest to be interposed between the bicuspid uh, teeth. If there is not, additional clearance would have to be made at this time. So, there is clearance here, and now the next part of the mouth preparation uh, that we can go to would be to prepare the axial surface, the lingual surface of the direct retainer on the bicuspid side uh, to be parallel to the path of insertion. Now, diagrammatically, it should be uh, in position to offset the force from the retentive wire. The lingual aspect of the tooth is parallel to the proposed path of insertion and on that surface will go our reciprocal arm. It reciprocates against the buckle or against the lingual pressure of the buckle clasp uh, on that tooth. We can also see the rest area in that uh, given tooth. So to accomplish this, we look at first our proposed path of insertion on the surveyor. And with that proposed path of insertion to help us as a guide when we have to grind this in the mouth, we should, we'll put a pencil line, scribe the pencil line there, uh, to parallel to the path of insertion as a visual aid. We will also place this line in the mouth use it as a guide and using a parallel shaped stone we will try to go parallel to that line and disc the lingual surface of the bicuspid. So in the mouth we'll first scribe that anterior line. Now this is going to be subject to error. We have to do this visually and there's no real good double check. I'll take uh, a straight edge. I have an idea of that exact path of insertion and I'm going to scribe that line on the patient's tooth. Now with the, again, with a slow speed handpiece and a parallel shaped, a parallel shaped stone, a barrel shaped stone I'm going to line it up with the anterior. I'm going to line it up with the anterior and then disc the lingual surface. Just take that back and disc the lingual surface 
of the bicuspid. Now, I've done this already on my study cast, so I have an idea as to how much reduction is going to be necessary. Now, this surface, this surface would also be polished with a similar shaped stone of a different grit uh, before we would accept it uh, finally. However, we want to double check now to see if the parallel shaped surface that we have just created in the patient's mouth is parallel to the given path of insertion. So we're going to make an alginate impression of the mouth, pour it up in, in uh, a half impression plaster, half stone, improved stone uh, mixture so that it will set up rather quickly. Then, by the use of our tripodization, we'll place the new cast on the surveyor to double check the parallel shaped surface that we have ground in the mouth. This impression plaster stone cast has been tripoded and placed on the surveyor to the same position. Uh, that the initial, initial diagnostic cast were placed when the correct path of insertion was chosen. And we can see that the disking with the stone that we have done is adequate. We do have a parallel surface on the lingual of the bicuspid, and it is, it is at the greatest diameter of the tooth, opposite our proposed retentive area. The next phase of mouth preparation, which will complete the mouth preparation of the, uh, the uh, non-restored teeth, is to alter the centric stop areas that will, uh, that will oppose the replacement teeth and the crown that is to be restored. Now, from the diagnostic wax up and diagnostic setup, we have found out that to improve our occlusion, we will have to alter these areas that are indicated in red. We'd have to alter those areas to better create uh, a, an area for a desirable centric stop, to create a flat area, taking away the roundedness to those areas. So we will then make that adjustment with any with any, uh, with any stone, any stone that is available and desirable uh, to get into those areas, a diamond or green stone, and then we will polish it with a rubber wheel. And this would then complete all mouth preparations. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.